Well, there are a number of things to consider when you're trying to adjust the zoom or the total magnification of the sample. The first is a practical uh, issue, so how do you do it? Um, the way you do it is you rotate this focus knob to various preset positions. And then uh, you can see if you do that, on the screen, you will see the magnification take place instantly. If you do that a lot, eventually uh, the sample falls out of focus because the different zooms are not what's called parfocal. So you need to adjust the focus by moving the fine focus knob here. Um, so if you move the fine focus, typically uh, if you're zooming in, you need to move the fine focus up, so kind of away from you. So I'm doing that now, and you can see that as I do that, this comes into focus. Um, so that's the how. Once you've decided on a, on a particular zoom, for example, now we're at 1.25, you need to tell the software what zoom you're at by clicking here. And this is super important because it not only affects uh, the metadata, it also uh, affects how the software reports the, sh the sheet shape to you. So it's really important to, whenever you change the zoom, change it here as well. Uh, but there's sort of a deeper issue. It's like, okay, what should the zoom be? So I'm gonna go back to 0 0.63 and go back to 0 0.63 here. So at the very minimum. And so what should the zoom be? So uh, this depends uh, mainly on how much detail you need in your sample and how big your sample is. So um, if you want a lot of detail in your sample, you'll need to zoom in. Uh, beyond a certain point, if you zoom in too much, your sample may not fit in the field of view, which will force you then to do tiling, uh, which will be a significant investment of time. So uh, if you decide, decide to zoom in and you wanna cover the entire sample, note that that's going to result in your need to do tiling. Um, so you, you, you may or may not wanna do that. Uh, another option that people do is they take images at low zoom and then if they don't need all that detail everywhere, they can take a, a sort of a, a more zoomed in Z stack of a small area. But you can take a, a, a very zoomed in image of a large sample, you'll just need to tile a lot. Um, so really the main consideration is, is the level of detail that you need. Then it becomes a question of, you know, if you want the entire sample, how much time is it going to take and do you really, really need that level of detail? Uh, Another thing that you can consider kind of as a rule of thumb is that you can, you know, if you have something like this, uh, you can zoom in to the point where the sample is still visible in its entirety in the field of view, uh, and then that won't cost you any time. It'll cost you, uh, if you don't crop, it'll cost you kind of more, more data, so you, you'll be using kind of information all over here as opposed to just this, which you could crop and then save some, some disk space. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, disk space is, is not the end of the world, it's, it's sort of cheap, so having something like this, you, you, you're kind of getting, uh, if you're here, you're sort of getting all that detail for free. Now there's one uh, sort of little caveat to the, you're getting all the detail for free, which is that the edges of the very, very edges of the field of view, as I explained in my light sheet microscopy lecture, uh, they have uh, worse quality uh, because they're sort of radial distortions. As you move away from the center, the objective doesn't perform as well. So if you really, really care about stuff that's happening on the edges, it might not be the best option to zoom in so that you have a lot of your sample close to the edges. But usually, just zooming in until you know your sample always fits in the field of view but it covers it nicely, that's usually a good strategy. Uh, that's the strategy that we're going to use now. So I don't know how much I've zoomed in. Let me go check. I've zoomed in by 1.25. This is a 2x objective. So my effective magnification uh, is uh, kind of comes from multiplying those two numbers. More importantly than the sort of total magnification is the pixel size. So if you look here, uh, these are tables of pixel sizes uh, with, with different kind of optics. This is the one you need to pay attention to. You can see that if I have a zoom of 1.25, my magnification is 2.5. So this times two. And then this is the size of my pixel, 2.46 microns. And your resolution on this system is roughly twice that. 
So I have around five micron resolution with that zoom in the XY dimension. All right, so let's say I want that 1.25 zoom. So I need to tell the microscope that that's what I wanted, uh, that that's what I'm using. Uh, so what next? So uh, before we go much further, what I'm going to do is actually switch channels uh, from the 561, where the, the labeling isn't very good or there's no labeling, to 647, which I just checked. Um, and actually, there's sort of more stuff that we can look at there. So I'm going to click on it. So now you can see that looks different. The check marks don't matter unless you're imaging more than one channel, which for the moment we're not. So you can see there's some sort of filamentous structures and there's also a lot of staining apparently on the edges. Uh, that's a typical uh, issue in IDISCO plus staining when your uh, antibody concentration is a little bit high. But despite that, this is also kind of an old sample, so that might uh, have something to do with, with this. And also it was in a tube that uh, might have had some oxidation, so I don't know what's going on here, but you can still see a lot of structure moving in the Z dimension. There's plenty of interesting stuff to image, okay? All right, so uh, in fact, uh, this is a good a sort of example uh, to, to test what, what sort of higher resolutions look like. So let's see if I can get something in the center of the field of view with some nice structure. Okay, so I'm going to move so that I can see this cluster near the middle. So I, what I want to show you now is, let's make sure we're in focus. So when you switch between channels, uh, you often have to refocus by hand. So I'm moving this knob. Uh, and if you're imaging many channels, uh, we have to do some, some more elaborate refocusing, which I'll discuss later. So that looks good. So let's see what, what this structure looks like if I zoom even further in. You can see it's falling out of focus. So again, I need to refocus by moving this up. Going to center that again. Zoom in even further. You can see it's falling out of focus. And so that is at the sort of highest level of detail. And you can see uh, those filaments in more detail than before if I move into Z dimension, for example, compared to if I zoomed out. So that's the highest possible detail. Let's kind of zoom back out as opposed to this. Now, what happens on this system is frequently people overestimate the resolution that they need. Um, so you can actually get a lot done with a relatively low zoom. Uh, so I encourage you to at least start by taking kind of low zoom images. Uh, let me see if I can get this back in the center. But I just wanted to show you some sort of other zoom options and how they, you know, they basically provide more detail as you would expect.